Hello everyone, my name is uh, Cisco Fauli. I work for the Document Foundation and uh, yeah, now I'm going to talk about um, yeah, scrapping the Crossable website and why I'm recently doing it. Uh, yeah, so basically when uh, CRAS occurs on, uh, well, in LibreOffice, then the users are prompt with this dialogue. So basically, LibreOffice creates a mini dump of the crash uh, with a break pad. And then if the user agrees, this uh, dump is sent to the crash, uh, crash the report instance we have which is based on the one that uh, Firefox implemented initially. Um, so yeah, it was uh, implemented for LibreOffice by Marcus uh, Morar. It was uh, back in 2016, and it started to be implemented in LibreOffice 5.2. Uh, uh, so far, we have in the instance, we have 166 versions of LibreOffice already, and so far almost, well, uh, 14 million uh, crashes were reported there. So basically when you go to the website, which is crashreport.libreoffice.org or documentfoundation.org, this is the main uh, page that you find. You have a drop-down list on top with the versions. And on top you have the versions displayed on this chart. So you see the evolution of reports in, the, in this case in the last seven days. And then when you check every uh, version, this is what you find. This is, uh, yeah, there is a list of reports sorted by the number of uh, reports. So on top, sorry, on top, oh, sorry. So on top, we will see the uh, most reported uh, crashes and then uh, sorted in that way. And then if we click on one of them, one of these signatures, then we have the list of the reports, when they were reported, the version and the uh, platform. And finally, if we click on one of these uh, reports for uh, its uh, signature, then we have for instance, here, the information about the versions where this crash was reported, information about operating system, the total, the count of uh, reports, CPU, and we also have uh, some details about this specific report. And uh, yeah, then we also have the, the the traces, which is, uh, yeah, the, the information the, the user sent. Um, so, yeah, the problem that I find with uh, the crash report uh, website is that in order to get information about, uh, for instance, the traces of specific uh, crash report, you have to click a lot of, a lot of uh, links and go to a lot of uh, pages. Then um, the website, it's really slow because I, I guess because of the number of reports we already ha have there and it takes a lot of time and yeah, it's very, very slow. And then like when the traces are reported for Windows uh, platforms, they are, uh, they use uh, 
back slash it. So then if you want to check it in your local build, like in my case, I use Linux, then I have to check, uh, change them to normal slashes. So it's a bit annoying. And then, sorry again, as I said, uh, the crashes are, are sorted by, by date. So as we saw before in here, this is for a specific uh, crash signature. They are sorted by, by day uh, of the report. So if we, if we want to check the most recent ones, we have to go to the last page. And for some crash reports, we have uh, hundreds of pages. So then it's another click that you have to perform. And yeah, it takes time, it's slow. And so yeah, at some point, I decided, okay, maybe it's better if we, well, have it like in one pe in in one place all the information about a specific version of LibreOffice. So then I decided to create a little script that basically scraps all this information into well. I decided to put it in the uh, CSV file. So basically, what it does is. It goes to the page of a specific version, uh, gets all the signatures we, th we have there. Then for each uh, signature crash, then we go to the last page, which normally are, well, they are the most recent ones. And uh, then <clears throat> for a recent uh, crash report, we from there we get the information we want to extract and then finally, we just uh, create the CSV file with all this information. So this is basically the script. We just call the version. And here, we also use the, uh, the parameter of the local repository. And I'm going to explain later why. And um, yeah, this is basically all the information we uh, retrieve for a specific uh, crash report, but uh, I'm gonna show it in a demo. I think it's easier to understand. So, yeah, basically, this is the information. Oh, okay, wait. Yeah, so basically this is the document that is generated by the script. So um, for instance, we have this grass signature here. We have the number of uh, reports that uh, are in the, in the crash report website. Then when the when the um, first crash report for that signature was reported, the last one, and then we take a specific report, which, which ID is this one. We see the version for this, probably when the script tries to get one for the uh, version that we uh, uh, use as a parameter, but if not, then it, it gets it from a previous version. And then we get this information from uh, from the website, which is the reason that uh, it gives the, uh, that it happened the, the crash. Then the platform, and here, uh, basically, this is the the traces of, of of the crash, the document, and and then the the line where where it happens, and finally, um, well. Uh, yeah, here. Yeah. Finally, that's the reason why uh, we use the repository uh, parameter. Here we have uh, the, the specific line um, where those traces are. So 
Um, now it's easier to find for a specific uh, class. So for instance, um, there are some straightforward classes which are divided by zero, like this one, exception in divided by zero, or maybe not this one, but uh, let me look for one that it's Yeah, for instance, we have this one here, which is a crash, uh, and the reason it's uh, divided by zero. Then here we have the traces, and we already have here <coughs> the code that it's executed. So if we look at the top of the trace, we see that, well, it's uh, divided by n calls. So yeah, something fishy there, so we, we can just go to the code and, and check it, but um, yeah, otherwise it's not from the crash report uh, website, it's really uh, difficult to uh, pinpoint these kind of crashes, so I think in this regard, it, having it in a, in a spreadsheet helps, helps a bit. So, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I started a few weeks ago with this script. Uh, so, yeah, I started with uh, 7332, and um, I uh, sent these reports to the mailing list, the development mailing list, or other can also check. Um, yeah, so far I, I've sent uh, four reports for different uh, versions of LibreOffice, I think it was 733, 733, 735, and then 740, the, the most recent one. And uh, yeah, I collected some of the crashes that were already fixed, I think because of uh, of these documents, uh, of these reports. So at least I could uh, identify uh, 13 divide by, by zero crashes that were fixed. Then uh, also uh, around 10, null, the, the references crashes that were also fixed, and two other uh, crashes that fixed. And yeah, I really want to thank uh, Stefan and Kaolan who uh, yeah, took the time to look at, at these reports I sent and uh, yeah they could identify some of the crashes and, and fix them. And um, yeah, this is uh, yeah, a chart of uh, number of reports we have had over time. And well, when we started, we got a lot of them. I know that at the time, uh, Marcus spent, and probably others, spent uh, time fixing probably the, the most obvious ones. Uh, but then since uh, 5.3 until 7.1, it, kind, it was kind of flat, the number of reports. And surprisingly, in 7.2 and 7.3, there is a drop in the number of reports. Uh, I believe it's because we have fixed them, or <laughs> maybe we have less, uh, less users. But uh, yeah, it alone said this morning that the number of downloads is increasing, so I believe we have less uh, crash reports nowadays, which is great, and I hope to even re re reduce it further, this, uh, this number of crash reports. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. I think that was quick. Do um, you have any question? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's. I didn't add it to the. So yeah, the the question is if I consider to add it to the crash report website itself, and yeah, that's something that I thought about. I just wanted because for me, 
uh, writing this script was quite quick. So I just wanted to play a bit with it to see if there was any benefit in, in having it. So yeah, I think uh, yeah, the to-do thing would be to integrate it in the crash report there. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if... I don't know, to be honest. I think on the one hand, it's a... Yeah, we, we just have... I mean, knowing the, for instance, knowing the, the number of reports for an old version, I think can be useful, but I, I don't think having all the information for specific crash reports from old versions, it's maybe it's not useful anymore. So maybe part of it can be clean. I don't know, that's something that, I mean, uh, we are adding more versions and we are having more crashes and, well, sorry, at some point, Maybe that's something that we have to decide to whether get rid of all reports or not, because I don't know if we, we don't have uh, infinite resources to to have to keep them. I don't know. Uh, do you have any information about uh, like the current size of of uh, the crash reports, like how many gigabytes we have for? in information? I don't know, but I think it's a 120 gigabyte database right now. Okay. Maybe move to an other database. Yeah. That could be another solution. Yeah, we... we the database is slow and the level. Yeah. We should also check whether if we get rid of all versions, if it's faster. I mean, I, I believe that's the reason why it's slow, but we, we should check. Okay, any other question? to you for fixing those classes. Yeah, happy happy to know that it's useful. Yeah, and yeah, for the recent column, actually it's, there are only four or five categories. Mm -hmm. But at least for this specific one, the divide by in zero, that's, I, I found it useful because it's easy to pinpoint those. Okay, yeah. thank you. Question to Cisco, why not using that uh, di di directly from the crash report website database? Yeah, that could be another option. But I think you need uh, an, an API to, for that. Well, and I'm not sure what she is. Like, like, yeah, I believe it's like uh, going, like, uh, querying the information from, from the database.
directly, but I don't have access to that. So unless there is an API for that, I don't know. I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if uh, Jose and I answer your question. Yeah. Okay, thanks.